Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, we're going to continue talking about the Pythagorean Theorem, um, just in a little bit of a different way. Today we're going to be looking at finding the distance of a line. Um, so for example, okay, so for example, when we look at a line like this, um, and you notice the grid behind it, remember that a diagonal line we can't really measure. So to find the distance of it, we can take advantage of the Pythagorean Theorem. One, two, three, four, five, and then counted your run, which was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So similarly, instead of doing loops this time, we're just going to count them with like a straight line. And I'm gonna make it dotted so we know it wasn't part of the graph. So my vertical distance was one two three four five and then for the horizontal one same thing just do a line and like we said that was 12. so now if i if you notice now it's looking like a right triangle so I can do my right angle right here, and now it just looks like every other problem that we've been looking at. So to label everything correctly, we set the, the vertical shift there. So right here, we wanna count this vertical shift. Since we said it was five, in this case, we don't care that we went down five, so it's not gonna be like negative five because we're just talking about the length of it. The length of it, whether you count from here and up or from here and down, the length remains to be five. So that one's gonna be labeled five, five units. Uh, and then same thing with our horizontal, whether you start from here and run all the way over here or started from here and went backwards, it doesn't matter because the distance was still 12. So now you have a regular right triangle and I can use my equation of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So remember that your c is always the side across the right angle and it's always going to be your longest side. So remember that we could just draw an arrow and that points to our c which ends up being my original line that I'm trying to find the distance for, which means if I find C, I'm finding the distance of that line. So C is still going to be C. Make sure that you label everything before you start plugging into the equation. So my A, my B, and my C. First start with your C, that one's the most important so that you don't make any mistakes. My C is, is my unknown, so I'm just gonna leave it as C. And then the other two numbers, remember A and B are your legs. Your legs can be interchangeable. You can call 5A and 12B. It's not going to affect your equation. The one that is going to affect your equation is the C. So I said A was 5, so I got to plug that in. Remember, it's 5 squared. My B was 12, so it's plus 12 squared. And then my C is my unknown, so I still need to find that. It stays a variable, so C squared. And then from here, five squared is 25. Remember, we're following our rules of PEMDAS. Start with parentheses, exponents, and then continue simplifying after that. Um, so remember that we wanna simplify our left side completely. 25 plus 144 would be 169 equal to C squared. And then just as any other equation, I want my variable to be all by itself. How do I get C by itself? I do the opposite of squaring. 
which is square rooting. So I square root 169, square root my c squared. Opposites cancel out, and I'm left with just c. And then the square root of 169 is 13. And so now I can say that the distance of this line was 13 units. Okay, so here we have a graph that has two points. So usually the question you'll get is what is the distance between these two points? So the distance between those two points, we're just talking about the shortest distance between them. So one straight line. So we want to know what the distance, what that line measures. Again, it's a diagonal line. I can't just count it. I can't just say, oh, this is one, two, three, four, five. That doesn't make sense. I'm not even counting an equal, an equal units. So again, we use my rise and my run or my vertical and my horizontal distances to make a right triangle. Again, I'm going to start with like a dotted line just so that you know it wasn't part of the graph. But my vertical one would be two units long. And then my horizontal one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units long. Okay, remember you could just count um, like normal. Starting from this point, you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then from this one, one, two. Okay, and there's my right angle. Um, so again, just as we did before, first have to identify your A, your B, and your C. My C is always the distance across from the right angle, so when I look at that, Here's my right angle, and across from it is this line. So that's what has to be my C. And that goes for any problem that you're looking at with a right triangle. That's the very first thing you want to identify. Okay, and then again, my A and my B, they're both legs. They're both on the same side of the equation, so it doesn't matter if I mix those ones up. I usually just do my smallest one for A, and then I'll do my B is 9 but um, you won't get the wrong answer if you switch them around. Now that I have those numbers, I'm gonna go ahead and substitute them in. So my A was two, so I need to write two squared. My B was nine, plus nine squared, and then my C is my variable that I need to find, so it's A C squared. Square both of those numbers, two squared is four, nine squared is 81. Then go ahead and simplify and add. That's 85 equal to c squared. And then again, opposite of squaring is square rooting. So I have to do that on both sides. So c is going to equal the square root of 85. And when I type it into the calculator, I get 9.219 and then some other numbers. But remember, we've been kind of just rounding to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to round that to 9.22. So the distance was somewhere around 9.22. And remember, we talked about C being the longest distance, so I can double check my work. I have 2, 9, and my C is 9.22, which is longer than both 2 and 9. So I know I'm on the right track. All right, and then just one more example for you guys. Um, and then the very last example that I'm going to go over is what if they give you two points to work with that are not already plotted. Just remember how to graph. Remember that it's always going to be x comma y. So your x value goes first. Your y value is the next one. So if I gave you 2 comma 1, that means positive 2 on your x and then positive 1 on your y. So it would mean that would be your point, the red point. Okay, let's say they gave you two points. Um, so for example, I have this first one. The first point they gave me is eight comma negative three. So to graph that, I go to positive eight on my x-axis. 
and then negative 3 on my y-axis, which would be this point right here. Then they gave me, so I graphed that one, and then 4 comma negative 7. So that's positive 4 and then negative 7 for my y, so I go down to negative 7. Okay, so now we want to know the distance between these two points. And the distance between those two points, again, we use those horizontal shifts to measure them. So, uh, sorry, horizontal and vertical. So we do 1, 2, 3, 4. And then for my horizontal, 1, 2, 3, 4. So both of those sides are 4. Again, your right angle is always where your L is being made. And then pointing straight across, this would be my C. Okay, and then remember to label your A, your B, and your C. Again, your C, again, your C is the one we're looking for, so C is still C. And then my A and my B will both be 4. So my equation here, 4 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. That's 16 plus 16 equals c squared. 16 plus 16 is 32. And then if I take the square root of that, I get c is equal to 5.65685. And then again, I just want to round to the nearest hundredth. So my c is going to be 5.66. Okay, so if you want to just try this on your own, I'll attach a grid to the assignment and you could do this one. You can go ahead and try it. Uh, if you try, you can share it through text, Instagram, or just uploading it to the Google Classroom.